right here. I've been wondering about what you told Yalvino about seeing souls. All that watcher business true? Mayhap I'm looking for someone. Woodcutter by the name of Harmka. It sure does. He was one of them. The mob that destroyed Cold Morn. I tracked him to Stalwart years ago, but got caught before I could finish my business. This man, Harmka. I saw him outside my house the night it burned, staring into the flames the way I seen you stare into souls. I knew it were a fool's errand trying to hunt down every man and woman that carried a torch into Cold Morn, but I... If I knew I got the one responsible for my kin and my hearth, I might could rest easy. I took a good long look that night. Ours was a little place with a yellow door right on the edge of town. He was there. Besides, I asked around when I first got to Stalwart. Townsfolk said that all the woodcutters in town took part in the purge. Point of pride for them. I told you he was part of the mob. I spotted him watching my house when it burned. But when we find him, I want to know if he's the one responsible for my home, my parents and my brothers and sister. I never thought I'd have the chance to know for sure. But you could look into his soul and find out. You being a watcher and all. Mighty fine of you. Mighty fine indeed. Don't know where he dallies these days, but someone in Stalwart could tell us. People from little villages, they always know. Effigies, eyes, that man loved to talk. If it's sane and logical reasoning you're wanting, you're going to be disappointed. Ain't no sense in any of it. Oh. Mayhap you've heard of Coldmore. Was a quiet, forgettable patch of the woods. Till a pack of rabid clodhoppers set it afire. That was the start of the purges. Deer Woodens killing their own. A farmer on the other side of the mountains woke up one day with his head all aflame and took it for the gibbering speech of his god. And so did a few thousand of his countrymen. So when he tired of Vorlis fields and marched west, a horde of armed hicks followed. St. Widewin and his blazing crusade celebrated his coup in Raid Saris by invading the Deerwood. Most of his forces headed north to Halgat Citadel, but a lucky few thousand ventured through the mountains. Through Cold Morn. We let him pass. You were from Cold Morn? When I heard what happened out there after the war, I couldn't believe my ears. Fine line between couldn't and wouldn't. Maybe not. But the Raid Sarens had us clean beat in numbers. Even bumpkins like us figured that. Just look at Mercy Vale. They fought back. And now there ain't one stone standing atop another in the whole village. Besides, we asked the Duke for help. Told him Widewind's troops was coming through the mountains. Seems he had better uses for his soldiers. So we let Widewind's soldiers pass. Left him for the Duke to wrangle on his own terms was after the Godhammer made a fine grid out of Widewind, when Deerwoodens were running on rage and looking for something to burn. They came at dark, hundreds of folk, every one of them mourning someone lost in the war. Must have decided it was our duty to escort their dead back to the wheel. They didn't light their torches till they had us surrounded. Time we saw them, there was a ring of fire closing around us. I woke. Ran to the window. Whole village were a maze of flames. Couldn't see nothing for the smoke. And the screams. Most ran for the streets. Got caught by the mob. Others hid, let their houses burn down around them.
That was my thinking, too. Ran, thought, hid, burned. Same as my neighbors and family. Just luckier. You said yourself that someone needed to bring the hammer down on the scum that raised cold morn. Sure. You want me to tell you straight? I found the men and women what destroyed my village, and I burned their houses down around them. Sometimes they was alone, and sometimes they wasn't. Well, we just gotta do our best with what time the gods give us, don't we? <laughs> I'd have been more pleased myself if I hadn't gotten caught like this. And if I'd gotten through a few more first. It were a mob that destroyed our village. But it was just one man that burned my family's house. Kept hoping I'd get to him as I was working my way through the rest of those maggots. No matter now, I suppose. Only kind to have with someone like him. Or me. No other way to feel about the man who flayed my living soul. Around about 13 years. Too long, you ask me. <laughs> He'd spread butter on bread and claim he made something. Never been accused of modesty, that man. He managed to stuff my soul into this heap of bronze, true enough. Maybe that makes him a genius. Also makes him a son of a bitch. Every day. Just kept putting it off. It's not like either of us was going anywhere. Looked after his tools, cleaned the workshop, swung the sledgehammer. Oh, and snatched up travelers for his soul tinkering. But don't you worry. They were all bad folk. Just so you know, you got a real professional working for you. Yeah, I've had enough of him, too. Just because I'm made of metal don't mean I got any special fondness for smiths and forges. No more than what Galvino already told you. Eh, nothing specific. Everyone looks about the same when they got their fingers up their noses. Only, the last group, one before you, there was something different about them. Couldn't put my finger on it, but they was dangerous. Almost felt the hair on the back of my neck. Ain't felt that way about anyone else walking through Galvino's door, that's for sure. Murder, tracking, and the best materials for kindling. Those are more my area of expertise. There weren't much to say about it. By my reckoning, that means it was pretty good. Ma was a trapper. Taught me to set snares and dress game. Dad was a tinker. I never had his patience, but it were fun to watch him work. My brothers and sister, they was good folk, too. Part of me's glad they ain't here to see me now. this place. Had that much right. really did it. I mean, people... I, uh, I told Tana I'd be willing to help out with digging out the mine. Hey there. Let me know if you need anything. Armka. Saw him head out some time ago. You can usually find him and some others out in the russet wood, felling trees. Well, what are we waiting for? Read a Valian mystery that started out like this. It ended badly. Is there anything else? Take care.
keeping an eye out. How goes? Horrock Shadow, what's that wicked thing doing here? It's a killer! Look, we don't want no trouble. Just trying to do our work. We'd be much obliged if you'd leave us be. And take that thing with you. Everyone does. Let the Raid Sarens into the Deerwood. What's that got to do with anything? Just a woodcutter. Ask anyone in Stalwart. They'll tell you. What did you say?
Village was a touch livelier when I saw it last. Ain't saying much, though. Bitter cold and a persistent odor of fish. And that were just the people. Anything's better than Galvino's workshop. You ain't heard the old buzzard sing. Uh huh. Almost fifteen years I've been looking for him. All that fretting and wondering, and the deed's over in less time than it takes to tell. Peace. Uh, now there's a funny word for it. I killed a lot of folk in my time. Felt their blood slick in my hands, smelled their flesh as it burned. And I always used to imagine what it would be like to have Harmka under my knife, feeling his breath come hot and fast, smelling the fear ooze out of him. Couldn't feel a thing. His fading pulse weren't no more than a patter of rain to me. Now that's just a puffed-up way of saying rottener than a shit-filled wagon. This body, it weren't made for feeling. Gouging my fingers into Harmka's wasting flesh, his screams just buzzing in my skull. All it did was remind me that this is a madman's fever dream. Like a prison, but no, because in a prison you lay your head down and you feel the straw soft beneath you. Your flesh prickling in the cold, black bread crumbling on your tongue. I still dream I'm folk. I wake up some mornings wondering why I can't feel the floor beneath me, thinking I, I must have fallen and gone crippled. But then I lift my head, see a bronze corpse stretching out in front of me. It's not pity I want, it's a choice. I dream too of what Galvino did that night. Those moments. I'd endure another cold morn if it'd spare me this fate. It was after I got caught in Stalwart. They'd locked me in a little house by the inn, the old mayor and his cronies. When a crowd of them came for me in the dark of night, I was only surprised it had taken them so long. Only they didn't march me to no gallows. No. They snuck me to another house on the edge of town, real sneaky-like. That's where I met Galvino. True enough. This was before the locals gave him the boot. Still weren't a popular fellow, though. He was fiddling with some machinery in his workshop. Had his sleeves rolled up, even though it was cold enough to see your breath. Never actually looked at me until he started fitting some copper helmet over my head. By that time, the mayor's goons had me trussed up good and tight. Galvino was having himself a grand time barking orders at that lot. He had agreed to hand me over to Galvino for an experiment. Claimed it was a fair punishment, but the town folk weren't too pleased at being denied their stone pitching. Didn't help that they heard the jangle of copper in that deal. In the end, that's what sent Galvino and the old mare packing. So while Galvino's fastening that helmet over my head and them copper bands around my arms... I'm starting to look at his contraption. And that's when I see it. It's this metal suit strapped into the machine, just like me. A cold, dead-eyed thing, all done up with fancy carvings and such. You think I didn't? I start asking Galvino and the rest of them what's going on. But they're too busy to answer. Then suddenly, they're waiting. Staring at me with that fixed, horrified look. But they ain't watching me. They're watching for something to happen. Galvino tells the woman nearest the machine to flip the handle. And then, just pain. Being torn apart every which way, feeling my soul peeled from my body. By the time I came to, I couldn't feel a thing. 
just this dull, distant sort of ache. I think that was when I knew. I reckon I'm the wrong person for that sort of question. But if it cools your conscience, Galvino didn't get off easy. The rest of Stalwart didn't take kindly to having a killer in their midst, nor to seeing their mayor and the army of aliens strike a secret deal. They drove Galvino out, destroyed a fortune in machinery, and wrote a letter to the Academy in Salona, ruining what was left of his name. Still, he's lucky he didn't get a pelting. The old mayor fled, too, and Stalwart's been as snug and cheery as ever. You're better company than Galvino. Been a while since I were out in the world. Guess I'm keen on seeing more of it. Even if I'm stuck with a bleeding heart. Anyways, I've been wondering about that fortress. Near everyone thought it'd have just the thing they need. Those villagers thought it'd fix up their broke downtown. Until you gave him bigger worries. Galvino always thought it carried some great secret of Animanson, and all them adventurers came looking for fancy gear. I... You're right. Let's go. <laughs>